Coming to you from the home of the mini trees. Inspirational, motivational, so come along with us. Hi everyone, I'm Tage Singh, and welcome back to Pixel Talk. This week's edition brings you an interview with Liliana Ayalde, the U.S. Ambassador to Brazil, Claire Langan's take on the presidential election, and Shannon Madden's school year tips for students. Hi, my name is Tage Singh, and I'm broadcasting from New Jersey on behalf of Stanford Online High School students from across the globe. So, hello world. With us here today is Ambassador Ayalde, the U.S. Ambassador to Brazil. Thank you so much for your time. Tej, I'm delighted to be connected uh, with you, with New Jersey, and the world. So the first question is, what areas take up most of your time as an ambassador? I'm assuming you must be quite busy. Yes, it's a, a sort of unpredictable days, uh, but I would say I would divide it into uh, interacting with government officials and uh, Brazilians of all sorts of life, not only government, but maybe uh, university leadership, uh, certainly private sector, and our private sector. I do a lot with U.S. companies and try to generate more U.S. business in Brazil. Um, researchers uh, you know, trying to promote uh, technology exchanges. So it's kind of a variety. So the meetings, uh, the, the bilateral agenda, as well as the internal uh, work of an embassy, uh, we're, we're huge. So I need to meet with the leaders of the different agencies to make sure that I am kept abreast of what's going on. So there's a certain management um, uh, to it as well. So it seems like you do quite a lot. What do you see as the most fulfilling or interesting part of your job? To me, it's it's quite challenging to do the diplomacy uh, part of it and whether there's a, a global issue that we want like to partner with Brazil and uh, you know you want to first educate yourself on what the different positions are on a human rights issue on some sort of other technological issue that we want Brazil to partner with us whether it's in an international body such as the UN or a regional body and and then uh, we work through so what's exciting for me is trying to see how we can bridge our positions and come up with a with a joint position or at least an understanding or with where each other is so I find that exciting, but also meeting so many different people, uh, Americans who have an interest in Brazil, and to make that connection. So uh, you know, there's and and with that, there's a variety. It can be anything from universities to research centers, uh, uh, again, U.S. companies and and whatever. So the fact that it's uh, sort of unpredictable, and I represent a sort of a gamut of of areas in which. Uh, 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 the, the United States is engaged in this country, it makes it exciting and interesting day. <laughs> and it seems like you're juggling a lot of different tasks, you know, being in charge of the relationships between two different countries. It's kind of like uh, the show Madam Secretary uh, and the House of Cards, obviously. You see it in TV, but here you're seeing it in real life, so that's an interesting concept. Yeah, well, there there is a little amount of drama, uh, but I, I would hope that it's a, a and, and at times it's uh, yeah it's really challenging issues, uh, uh, but the exposure to so many so many aspects and you be, you can become an expert in uh, through the different specialists that are at the embassy uh, in areas that you'd never imagine you would. Uh, some things very technical, whether it's in the climate change area, but the things that are making a difference for the world, which is exciting. And I doubt that any two days, you know, might be the same uh, for you. But what does a typical day just look like? Yeah, totally. And, and no, no day is the same, and no day starts the same as you think it was going to be. You know, I have a schedule that that uh, probably starts off with a press brief. Uh, that's probably the one thing that I know will happen in the morning. Uh, so I get together my, with uh, my staff who who mon monitors the press and. And uh, you know, we try to speak in Portuguese to get some of the um, uh, the vocabulary that is unique to that particular political issue. 
and uh, get, get a good grasp for the day. And uh, so I'm not uh, blindsided. But then after that, I can have a you know, country team meeting, which brings together representatives from all the different agencies that are in the mission. Uh, at times, uh, I am connected with our consulates. We have consulates throughout Recife, Sao Paulo, all of them in and, uh, and, and Rio, all bringing them a different perspectives of, of this country that's huge and very, uh, very diverse. And I may have, you know, meetings with um, some CEOs that may be in town or a, a VP for governmental relations who is having an issue on getting their product uh, produced here. Or, you know, I may go to Congress uh, and meet with some of the deputies or the senators uh, where there's a particular interest in our bilateral agenda. I mean, may meet with the minister. Um, a courtesy call and just make sure that we know where there's a mutual coincidence in our in our agendas. Uh, I may receive other ambassadors. Uh, Brasilia has uh, one of the largest presence uh, besides New York of representatives from around the world. So I, you know, may be seeing the ambassador of Malawi one day, the new ambassador of uh, Germany, and we talk about um, uh, global issues, regional issues, as well as bilateral issues. And then, um, uh, of course, I have internal meetings just to to, to, buy, to to troubleshoot or be supportive to what our staff is doing. And then my day goes into my night, which is also very busy. Um, it may sound easy and fun, uh, receptions and dinners, but they're usually, uh, that's uh, where a lot of business gets done, you know, where we socially maybe try to push our agenda or learn about uh, what others are doing and my fine joint agenda. So it's a, you know, it's a very busy, uh, busy the regularly very busy evenings as well. So that's kind of the, a taste of my day. And you're seeing like you're communicating with so many different people across across the globe. Is it mainly through Google Hangouts like this, or do you travel? How often do you travel? I travel very often, uh, mostly in Brazil. Uh, this is a country of 210 million people, so it's huge. So think about the United States. You know, the West Coast is very different from the East Coast, and certainly Middle America. So being in Brazil is about like being in Washington D.C. It's very government oriented, um, a lot of politics. But the business sector is, is primarily in what would be equivalent to a New York, which is Sao Paulo. So I have to go to Sao Paulo. And in fact, I was there yesterday. I met with representatives from a lot of our companies to hear how they're doing. Brazil is going through very tough um, economic times. So I wanted to hear, you know, are they laying off people? What are their, what's the outlook for the next year? How are they been uh, accommodating uh, to resist these economic situations? So I traveled to, to uh, uh, Sao Paulo. I spent a lot of time in Rio preparing for the Olympics and the Paralympics and then participating in, in the Paralympics. Rio is the center for you know, oil and gas for communications. Of course, it was the 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 world's uh, uh, center of uh, of uh, sports. Uh, very exciting times, and I go there often. Then the northeast, we have a consulate in in Recife, which um, uh, the northeast is very different. It's a it's it's a poor area of the country. And uh, uh, so we have a presence there, but I go to other places where we may not necessarily have a presence, but where we have interests. We wanna get more diverse students, for instance, from the Amazon. So I travel to some of the Amazon states uh, and uh, those of course are very interesting. And there's a lot of interest in English language uh, in learning uh, uh, and connecting with students uh, elsewhere. So by being there, I can provide some of the resources that they are that we have to uh, students about going and studying to the United States, for instance. Um, so it's uh, it's a lot of travel, and every once in a while, I travel to to Washington or Miami or someplace in the state where there may be some meeting uh, that the that the State Department is hosting or others for outreach. I'm invited by think tanks and or other uh, entities that may have an interest in Brazil, and so they invite me to speak and about the you know what is Brazil today and what how is our relationship shaping so there's there's a variety of trips as well and you were talking about students earlier so moving on to the segment about you know, your experience how was your high school or college experience like are there any memories of particular courses or teachers or professors that inspired you that you, know, you still remember to this day 
Well, I went to a rather small school, but I was always um, interested in uh, anything that had to do with international relations. Um, that gave me a taste for cultures, uh, languages, and so I, I remember that as a child I always enjoyed that. Maybe it was because it was always meant to be, and uh, being in the uh, uh, in the foreign service. Uh, so I always enjoyed that and meeting people from different countries and um, certainly learning languages from a young age. So pulling from your experiences, is there anything that you would like to tell our generation? Do you have a message or advice of sorts? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as I look back and, and, and uh, how people have shaped my current career and, you know, what has been useful, uh, one is, I think, um, to be yourself no matter what. I mean, sometimes people change because they think, oh, now I'm the boss, I have to be different. And so I think uh, you are what you are and you should, uh, you know, uh, enjoy it as as you go through. The other is 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 about that enjoying it, just to have fun. You know, you, you want to do what you really enjoy. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, uh, then it's pretty uh, awful to go through the day. Um, you spend a lot of day, a lot of part of your of your day working, but work should be fun. So um, I think that uh, that's that's something I carry with me, and and I would think that that would be useful for for others as well. So now we're at our this or that segment. So we'll provide you with a question, just answer in a few words if that's possible. Okay. Would you rather have one wish granted today or three in 10 years? Uh, one wish granted today. Is there something you wish the education system of today taught that it currently doesn't? Ooh, uh, something the, the system is not teaching. Um, I think we become very technological and, uh, you know, relations. So I see a lot of, of the younger generation dealing a lot with technology and, and sometimes I, I, I worry whether the human relations and the, you know, may be put to a side. So I think interactions are very important at the workplace and in life. And so I would hope that that would be maintained. And it's crucial for jobs like yours or anything where, communicating between countries or companies it plays a critical role in our society very critical and also you know I have for instance a, 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 an embassy that has a thousand four hundred people uh, and so dealing with the issues everyone's not equally the same meaning we all have different personalities we may have strong personalities maybe we may get along with people so managing people is very important and communication skills and interpersonal skill, skills are key to be successful that's a lot of employees is brazil one of the largest ones like i remember, I remember using it other than the u.s but do all embassies i'm curious have that many people or yeah, um, this this is this is one of the largest it's definitely one of the largest uh certainly in the region um we, we have a lot of people, not only here in Brazil, but as I mentioned, a little bit spread out in the other consulates. So that, that adds a, a, a challenge of making sure we're all singing from the same page. What's your favorite thing to do in your free time? Oh, dear. Um, I spend time with the family. I like to, uh, I've got, I have two uh, teenage daughters and now they're going to school, but um, when they're here, you know, doing things together, uh, traveling and uh, seeing different parts of whatever place we're in. And they've, they've uh, been a, uh, an important part of our lives. So, so we, we, we try to do as much as we can together. What's your favorite newspaper or website to read? Oh, I do a lot of surfing. <laughs> you know, I feel like you need to sort of, uh, and maybe that is a mistake because there's so much out there, but I try to make sure that I have the temperature on, on everything, including sometimes there's, there's some blogs or whatever that, that may be out there, but it, I think it's important to have a kind of a, a broad view. And, and so, you know, I, I try to read the, the, um, um, the regular, uh, you know, New York Times or uh, Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post, uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot out there. I think the challenge is, is uh, you know, how much can you read in a day, and uh, with every on top of everything else I have. So I try to. Um, I mean, sometimes people send things to me because they know I'm interested. So I try to to focus on those as well. Would you rather win an Olympic or? 
an Academy Award? Oh, because we've just gone through the Olympics that I'm just sort of thrilled with having had that experience, uh, I would say Olympics. If you could trade lives with any person for a day, who would it be? You know, that's a tough question. Um, I always uh, am challenged with that. Um, I think it would be someone who is doing something for humankind, someone who is uh, involved in innovation, uh, but uh, with resolving an issue we have today. So if uh, anything that would be uh, inventions or, or uh, technology, but in a way that helps people. Interesting. So what's the best professional advice you've been given? Um, I think uh, going back to what I've already said, um, uh, uh, being yourself, I think that has been uh, particularly important for me. That even though I've moved through the through the ranks in the in the foreign service, um, I'm still the same person. Um, that's been helpful. And the other is about uh, the importance of a of a, of a happy uh, workplace. And so you know, anything I can do is I. Uh, as a leader to improve the workplace, I think it's important. So that concludes our interview with Ambassador Yalde. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We sincerely appreciate it. Well, thank you. It was fun. Uh, and I hope that uh, everyone that's listening to this finds some nugget of, of, of important advice or, or interesting uh, and new things for them. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Claire Langdon and today I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of the American people's arguments against the two prospective presidential candidates, focusing especially on American politics, a critical perspective on the arguments of the presidential candidates and the American people. As most of us are probably aware from the news lately, this presidential election has been one of the most controversial yet. Many people exert their opinions that neither Donald Trump nor Hillary Clinton are viable options for the next President of the United States. Additionally, upon closer inspection of both candidates' arguments, it is interesting to dissect the logical legitimacy of their assertions. For example, both candidates are guilty of using ad hominem arguments against each other by publishing propaganda and making personal insults during debates, which shines a negative light on both contenders in the opinions of the American people. The resulting disagreements that ensue are some of the many reasons that undecided American voters dub both candidates as incapable and undesirable. Furthermore, the results of this type of rhetoric make both candidates seem immature and unreliable in the eyes of many viewers. While supporters of Clinton argue for her experience, Trump supporters are looking for a positive change in the economy and policies of our country. Yet, many voters are undecided because of an arguable lack of maturity and argumentative legitimacy as exhibited by the prospective candidates, which results in rampant controversy that we see in American politics today. Thanks for watching! Hi guys, I'm back. And as a senior at OHS, I've developed a couple of tricks to make it through this mid-semester slump you're probably feeling right about now. If it hasn't hit you yet, get ready. And if you're one of the students who doesn't go through this rough patch, then I probably kind of hate you right now. Go out right now and buy another pair of sweatpants because as the weather gets colder, depending on where you live, you'll want the warmth of sweatpants in addition to the comfort they provide when you're writing that midterm paper at 3 a.m. at your kitchen table. If you think you already own enough sweats, think again. This midterm season, you're going to be skipping a few showers, so you'll want to make sure you have plenty of fresh sweatpants Make sure you have a big enough coffee mug. Midterm season basically means no sleep. And while some people can stay awake countless hours at a time, for the normal people out there, we need our caffeine. This being said, you should probably make sure you have at least a bowl-sized coffee mug on hand. If you're not a coffee person, you can use it for tea. If you're not a tea person, you can use it for hot cocoa. And if you're not a hot chocolate person, then you aren't human. All right, guys, this is a real tip. Don't stress yourself out too much. I know this seems impossible as it's basically in every OHSer's DNA to stress, but you'll end up burning out with half the semester to go. Take breaks, take care of yourself, and do whatever it takes to de-stress. You might lose a couple of hours of sleep and a little bit of your sanity, but I promise that you'll make it through. And just remember, when you do make it through these next few weeks, you can always look forward to finals. Thanks for watching. Until then, 